So Thomas Jefferson writes to Franklin a couple of weeks before the declaration is going to be ratified and says, here's my draft. Have you got any changes? And Franklin reads Jefferson's draft, which says, we hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable. And he crosses out sacred and undeniable and replaces it with self-evident. And that's the edit. And I think it's a wonderful almost metaphor or parable for the post-Christian West. Now, I, in and of itself, I think you could say the edit doesn't make a huge amount of difference. That's not the claim I'm really making. I don't think it's a, wow, suddenly we were, we, had Jefferson left the word sacred and undeniable in, we would have gone down a very different path. That's not the claim. But I think it serves as a really good parable of the post-Christian West, which is that what we do is we take truths which are actually grounded in Christian thought, Christian anthropology. I mean, even the fact that it said they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. You think, well, that's certainly not in the modern sense. That's not self-evident to most people today at all. It wasn't self-evident to several of the founders in many ways. And a lot of them hadn't believed that these rights they then enumerate were, were a real thing, even 10 or 15 years before they wrote the Declaration. So these things are, they are sacred truths. They're things which are grounded in Christian assumptions about God, about human beings. But what, by calling them self-evident, two things happens. One is, I mean, Franklin is obviously make, wanting to make a broader enlightenment appeal. He, it is to some degree a universalization of the idea. So rather than saying these things come from Christian roots, it's a way of saying these things are, if you understand the terms of the debate, they're obvious. And there's a lot of literature about what self-evident means and, and people that go back and forth about exactly how it was meant. But effectively, that one of the things that happens is you univer he universalizes a, a, a pre presumptively Christian claim into a more sort of universal one. And the other thing that happens is that people today and ever since take the word self-evident in a slightly less technical meaning and go, this is just, this is obvious to us. Like, we know this. And, and people now, today live that way, not just with respect to the Declaration, but with respect to Christian moral convictions across the board. So it now seems indisputable to people that human beings have rights and that human beings have a right, I mean, in many cases, have a right to, to vote, which was not self-evident even at the time of the Declaration. It wasn't, um, and even, but many, many others, you have a right to have this and this and this and to be treated in these ways. But that does not follow from the materialist largely evolutionary paradigm that most modern people claim to believe about the origins of human beings. It doesn't follow that if, you know, you evolve from, you know, nothing, evolve from sort of goo um, through apes and, and into whatever you believe about evolution, but that doesn't lead to the conclusion that human beings have rights and must be protected and have dignity and that you should make sure you protect children or women or minorities. Those just don't follow from the evolutionary premise. Well, those, those things follow from Christian assumptions about the God-givenness of human dignity and being made in God's image. But we now treat them as self-evident. We now treat them. So one of the things that Franklin's edit does is to universalize a claim. But the other one it does is to, I think, is just a great metaphor for the way modern people think about Christian moral convictions that actually don't hold unless you have Christian assumptions about God and the world but which, because everyone thinks they're incredibly obvious, they now think, well, we don't need Christianity then, because we've got those things secure, we can keep the fruit without the roots. And that is some of what's happening in the modern West, as people are continuing to insist, yeah, no, of course, you Christians are in, people are entitled to these rights, these kind of dignity, and so on. But say, so, yeah, but you don't need God for that, it's just obvious. And you think, well, actually, it really isn't. And if, I'd be interested to know, of course, in 500 years' time, if belief in God in that sense is withered dramatically, do these things still hold? And of course, you, fascism would be a particularly vivid example in the last hundred years of when you say, no, it often doesn't. And I think it'd be dangerous to assume it always will.